if you have been doing android development and designing the screen layouts i am sure you might have come across the term dp pretty much everywhere the dimensions of the screen layouts and widgets are all provided using the term called dp now the question is what does this dp mean or sometimes even it is referred to as dip dp or dip basically stands for density independent pixel but why are we using this density independent pixel to provide the dimensions why not use pixel instead of the density independent pixel what does ldpi mdpi hdpi xhdpi mean in android development why android recommends using the density independent pixel while deciding the dimensions of the screen layouts or ui widgets well that is what will be the focus of the discussion in the fourth edition of developer insight we will be talking about how screen density affects screen design and we also will get down to what's basically up with ppi dpi dip and dp so let's get started the term ppi that is pixel per inch or the dots per inch are not strictly the same if you are very particular about the usage of these terms ppi is more of a electronic term it is number of pixels that are available on a square inch area on the electronic screen and dpi is the number of dots that are available in the square inch of a paper that gets printed with a printer so they are not one and the same each pixel can be a combination of red green blue sub parts which are typically used to illuminate a single pixel with various color configurations but in case of dpi that is not the case as you can make out while you print something on a paper it is basically a combination of dots that printer can imprint on the paper and here dpi basically means how closely these dots can be printed on the paper in the mobile technology somehow the ppi and dpi are being used interchangeably so you can assume that when somebody says dpi and the ppi in mobile technology they mean one and the same regardless of what it is you can be pretty much sure that denser the ppi or dpi better the quality of the image on the mobile screen or printed output on the paper but in this particular discussion we will stick to the term dpi because in the android world dpi is the most used term rather than the ppi now coming back to the question of what happens if we give the dimensions of the ui widgets or the screen layouts using pixels rather than density independent pixel to understand that let's try to render a button with the dimensions of width 10 pixel and the height of around 4 pixel to understand how this gets rendered on screens of different densities let me create screens with three different densities so the pixel patch that you are seeing on the extreme right has got the highest density and then in the middle has got lower density than the right one and the pixel patch that is on the extreme left has the least pixel density now let us try to render this particular button on the very first screen and when we try to do that this is how it will look like and now let us try to render that particular button on a little bit denser screen and this is how it will look like and if we try to render the same on the most densest pixel patch this is how it will look so as you can observe if we provide dimensions in the hard coded values of pixels when they get rendered on various screen densities the size of the ui widget actually keeps on getting reduced as density of the screen keeps on increasing so higher the dpi smaller the size of the widget with this we can actually get into a trouble because we actually don't want the size of the button to change significantly based on the density of the screen we actually want to maintain consistently the same size regardless of the density of the screen and that is where density independent pixel concept comes into picture which in short is called as dip or dp so how does this density independent pixel concept works android basically categorizes the screen densities into different categories it could be starting from ldpi mdpi up to triple x hdpi ldpi is usually 120 dots per inch mdpi is 160 dots 
per inch and so on triple x hdpi is usually around 640 dots per inch and then android considers 160 dpi that is medium dots per inch screen density as the baseline density so if you consider baseline density as x then the hdpi which is 420 dpi will come around 1.5 5x. If you are wondering how we got 1.5x, it is a very straightforward math that is 240 divided by 160. And we can just apply the same concept and come up with how much more the different screen densities are in terms of baseline density. And 120 dpi would basically mean 0.75 times the baseline density. So now all other pixel densities are being defined in terms of the baseline density which is 160 dpi. So let's assume that that pixel patch that we are seeing on the extreme left is MDPI screen and on the MDPI screen base pixel width and height is 10 by 4 so whatever the button that we are rendering on the MDPI screen pretty much remains same so the pixel patch that is in the middle let us consider that it is HDPI so using the concept of how many more the pixel width and height would be it would be basically 15 by 6 so the same button would be rendered like this if we apply the same concept to a X HDPI screen then it would be 20 by 8 we are basically running out of pixels so let me add some more pixel and this is how the button would get rendered on the XHDPI screen. So as you can make out, if we had provided dimensions of the button in DP rather than in pixel, the size of the UI widget that is button here would still not get distorted too much. You would get pretty much the same sized widgets irrespective of what is the density of the screen. And that is the whole concept behind why Android recommends using density independent pixel or DP as the main way of providing dimensions while designing the screen layouts or widgets. This works perfectly fine when we are working with simple native Android widgets. But what if we are working with icon which is a png file once again what android does is it recommends you to create the icon keeping 160 dpi as the baseline density and then you just extrapolate it to a different screen densities and create much bigger and bigger icons to support different screen densities assuming that these are the launcher icons that we are talking about we have to keep these launcher icons under mip map hdpi mdpi x hdpi double x hdpi and triple x hdpi folders under the resource folder android will automatically pick the icon that is present under these individual folders depending upon what is the screen density in which the application is running and in case if you are not talking about the launcher icons you have some other icons which you want to use in your app then you can create a certain set of folders like drawable hdpi drawable mdpi x hdpi double x hdpi and triple x hdpi these folders would be subfolder under the resource folder and you will have to provide icons with the different sizes and resolutions in these individual folders appropriately and once again the android will pick these icons based on what is the screen density on which the app is running what is even better option is instead of using these png files it is better to use the svgs that is a scalar vector graphics images to draw the icons in the app this will significantly reduce your overall memory footprint of your apk that's it about the concept of how the screen density works while designing screen layouts and the icons for supporting different density screens so comment down below how often do you use the svgs while you are implementing a android application and don't forget to like comment share and subscribe to the channel take care bye